guys, so today I'm back with a new video that you guys have been asking for for so long and I finally got around to filming it. I don't know why I've put off filming this for so long. I kind of feel like I'm put off filming it because so many people are like, you're not successful, why are you giving tips? But, you know, I think I've done okay. I'm, I'm happy with where I am. <laughs> you guys have been asking me to make a video with just some tips on how to start a YouTube channel, how to be more successful, how to gain views, how to gain subscribers, how to lay out your channel, the equipment you need, all that jazz. You guys have been asking me so, so much. So here I am, finally filming it. Before I get into this video, I should have paused everything and mentioned I have recently made a new Twitter. I deleted my old one, so I can almost guarantee you're not gonna be following me. My new, my new one is Bethany Lee XO. I'll put all my social media on the screen right now in case you're interested in any of it. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know in case you were wondering where my Twitter had gone. <laughs> Enough rambling, let's just roll on into the video. It's why you're here really, so let's just <laughs> proceed. So the first thing I want to mention is getting started, obviously. It's, it's the first thing you do. <laughs> when you start your channel, the first thing you want to do is obviously think of a banging username. My username is Bethany Lee. I think it's pretty good. It's really simple and I don't know. I think it's really just like to the point. It's my name. You know who I am. You're going to think, oh, that's Beth. You already know my name. Like before you clicked on this video, you will have seen my name. And I think that's something that really helps you engage with people and like starts building that level of friendship between you and the person watching you because they feel like they know you a little bit more. So I love it when people have their name as their channel like just like Beth or Bethany Lee or Eve Bennett or Jasmine Clough or Sophie Clough or anyone like that like you know what I mean I really like it when people have their name as their channel name I think it's really effective and it saves the time of like trying to figure out what you want your username to be because honestly that is so time consuming along with starting up you want to get a channel banner you want to get a channel trailer and making a channel banner can be super, super, super difficult. If you Google, like, whatever your channel is, like, lifestyle YouTube banner, like, royalty free, there'll be one on there that you can use if you don't know how to make one yet. If you're really good at graphics, you can obviously dive in and do that. If you have a little bit of money in your pocket that you're willing to spend, you can definitely contact someone that makes banners. There are loads of people on Tumblr if you search banner maker in the thing. Someone will come up that makes banners probably for like $10. Most people on Tumblr that I see making banners are American, so it's always $10. So, you know, $10 is like £8, something like that. Not too much to have a really cool banner made for you, customised, you know. It's not that bad, but if you're good at like computery things, I make my own banner and I am shockingly terrible at anything to do with graphics. A channel trailer would be super useful for you, I guess. It just kind of shows anyone that is new to your channel who clicks on your page, what your channel's about, what you do. You can literally make a two second video like, hey, I'm Beth, I make beauty, fashion, lifestyle videos. It's my new channel, hope you enjoy, hope you subscribe, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, like it can be literally 10 seconds long, just you talking, explaining what your channel's like for like the first few months until you have clips from videos that you can compile and make a fancier one. I'll link my um, channel trailer below. It was made by one of my lovely viewers and thank you so much for it. When you set up your channel, I think that it's great to have an all around platform. So having an Instagram, a Snapchat, a Twitter, obviously a YouTube, maybe a Tumblr, like all in the same username. My channel name is Bethany Lee. It used to be Bethany Lee XO. So my channel name is Bethany Lee. My Twitter is Bethany Lee XO. My you now is Bethany Lee XO. My Instagram is Bethany Lee XO. My Snapchat is Bethany Lee XO. My Facebook page is Bethany Lee XO. And it's just, it's handy for people to see you everywhere. And I also recommend using the same profile photo on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, any social network that you have, use the exact same um, picture. You guys will probably notice that I do that. It's because I was taught this in one of the YouTube space lesson things that I was invited to, and they said if they keep seeing your face around, they're more likely to click on your stuff, and it builds like higher engagement, and people know that it's you, and stuff like that. They just said it's a good thing to do. <laughs> By the way, I just wanted to mention, I'm not pulling all of this advice out of my ass. When I was around... 
50,000 subscribers, I had about 50,000 subscribers, YouTube Space London messaged me and was like, hey, we see loads of potential in you, would you like to join this YouTube class lesson thing? And I got a little plaque at the end of it that said YouTube Space London, it's got like a red play button on it, it's in my other room so I'm not going to go get it, but um, yeah, you got that at the end of it and they just taught you loads of advice and stuff like that and I thought some of their advice and tips would be super useful for you guys as well, so I'm going to mention a few things that they taught me in this video. The next thing you obviously want to do is make your first video. Personally, I think there are two routes you can go down. You can either go down the route of which video is going to get most views, or you can go down the route of which video is going to help your audience get to know you better. So I have two different options for you guys. If you want to go down the route of getting more views, then definitely do a morning routine, night routine, something like that, everyday makeup routine, you know, something that's heavily searched for. If you want your audience to get to know you immediately, I recommend doing a Q&A, 50 facts, something like that, just like a get to know me kind of video where your audience can see like who you are, what you're about, your personality a little bit, and I think that will really help you like build a great connection between you and whoever is watching you the other end of the screen. This all kind of ties in with like the getting started first bits and bobs that I really want to mention to you guys and that is equipment. I get so many questions about my equipment, my lighting, my vlog camera, my tripod, my stabilizers, everything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile a list in the description with links to everything I can find links to. My tripod is about 80 years old, so, and that was 80, not 8. It's so old so I might not even have it anymore, like online, because it's so old. It's probably not 80 years old, but it was my granddad's when he was young, so, yeah. So I'm going to run you through it quickly now. My camera that I'm currently using is my Canon EOS 600D. If you're buying a new camera, this one is about £300 now. I got it when it was like pretty much brand new. I've had it since I started, pretty much. If you want to get a newer camera, the Canon 70D is great. It's got auto focus, so when you move, the camera will stay focused. With my camera, if I move forward, I go blurry. If I move backwards too far, I go blurry. If I sit exactly where I focused it, it will be perfect, but with the 70D, if I move here, it'll still be focused. If I move here, it will still be focused, and my camera doesn't have that capability. The lens I use is the Sigma 18-35, I'm pretty sure. It's either 18-35 or 18-30mm, and I'm pretty sure it's the 18-35 actually. Almost positive. It's a really good lens, I absolutely love it. As you can see, it's crisp on me and then the background it's pretty blurry not so much right now because I'm so close to the background but in previous videos you'll see my background is super blurry and I'm really crisp and I love that with a lens my tripod is the Miranda 600 it's really old I recommend getting a newer one this kind of like on its last legs haha <laughs> do you get it because it's a tripod funny right <laughs> I also use a remote to focus my camera, it's just a little Canon remote, I press the little button in the middle, you can hear it focusing and it can take pictures, it can stop recording, start recording, all that jazz which is super super useful so you can focus your camera while you're sitting like 2 or 3 metres away, I think this works from 4 metres away and then it stops. These are a pound on eBay, super super worth it. My vlog camera is the Canon G7X. If you're just starting out, I recommend using the Canon SX160, that is my first vlogging camera, and Beauty Spectrum, Molly, you guys probably know her, she's fab. Um, I'll link one of her vlogs below so you can like check out the quality, and I'll also link my vlog below so you can see the quality difference. The G7X is better quality than the SX160, but the SX160 is like £60, like brand new, so it's definitely worth it. With buying cameras, I always recommend to people to buy it second hand. I never understand why people buy cameras first hand or lenses first hand, I just don't get it. This lens was second hand and it works just as well as it would if it was first hand. No scratches, no bumps, it came in the original box. My vlogging camera was second hand, it works perfectly. Honestly, please don't buy a first hand camera, save your money. I don't know, don't buy a first hand camera. Also I get a lot of questions about the lights that I use 
The lights that I use are soft boxes, two big soft boxes. I think ring lights are a little bit better, but soft boxes for me, I can get like the perfect shadows and stuff like that. So I prefer to use those. And that is everything I use equipment wise. I guess you could kind of class editing software as equipment. I use Final Cut Pro. It is pretty pricey, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. On any like Mac product, you usually get iMovie for free. I use that for two years of doing YouTube. It works fine. You get loads of great free effects, and it's a lot easier to use than Final Cut Pro. Actually, is it? I don't know. When you're first learning how to use Final Cut Pro, you're like, oh my god, this is so hard. But once you've got the hang of it, it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. And you can edit so much quicker than on iMovie. But Windows Movie Maker, I use that for like quite a few months when I first started out on my channel because this used to be a singing channel. <laughs> That's why my URL is singing, just singing at the top of my page. But Windows Movie Maker is fine for just like basic cuts. As soon as you can afford it or you're like taking YouTube a little bit more seriously and you kind of want to invest in the quality of your videos, I definitely recommend getting an Apple product. I have an Apple MacBook 13 inch retina display, I would say is key for editing videos. Mine has retina, if you don't want to pay like, I think it's only like 200 more, not too much for like a massive quality difference. And I also have a huge iMac which is so good for editing because you can see everything perfectly, it's really good for colour correcting and stuff like that. And yeah, I like it, it works. Obviously an Apple MacBook is very different in price to an iMac. My iMac was 2000, it was either 2700, 2800 or 2300, I think it was 2850, can't completely remember. And my uh, MacBook was about 800, so it's a massive, massive price difference. If you get a if you get a 2013 MacBook, you'll probably be able to get it for 600 pounds, and it'll be like brand new. The quality of it, obviously, it'll be used, but it'll be pretty much brand new. You won't notice any marks or problems with it. So, yeah. Again, computers best to get it secondhand. I don't know why I didn't get my Mac secondhand actually. Bit silly of me. The next thing I want to mention to you guys is just kind of like brand stuff because I get a lot of questions like oh how do you work with so many cool brands how do you contact brands all that jazz personally because I have quite a few subscribers I get about like 50 to 100 emails a day from brands contacting me and that's very time consuming going through every single brand in my email to reply to them look at what they've got tell them my fees blah 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 when I first started out I used to use grapevine and famebit I still use it now and again just to like look through, see what's going on, see if there's anything I'd love to work with or use. And I will leave links to Grapevine and Famebit below. It is great for small YouTubers who are just starting out. I really, really recommend it. If you're looking for a platform to work with really cool, fun, exciting brands, like you can even get holidays from working with brands, which has happened to me a few times and it is the most exciting, amazing thing ever. Like. I know. Bliss. But I'll leave those two sites linked down below because they're pretty much self-explanatory. There's a big bunch of brands on there. You can contact the ones you think your audience would love or the ones that you would love and it's it's fun. It's fun. I like it. I think filming and stuff like that is the most difficult thing to talk about. With this video I kind of wanted to talk about more equipment and getting started and stuff like that because actually filming videos and personalising videos is so different for every person. I love filming lookbooks, they're my absolute favourite. I love filming and editing lookbooks. Some people love filming makeup tutorials. Some people love filming DIYs. It's different for everybody. But I think the key to getting a good, exciting, fun, engaging video is to putting your personality in there and just oozing excitement and passion for what you're doing. I get the best feedback on the videos that I am so incredibly excited to post and upload and I think the key to being successful on YouTube is being genuine and hard work. Don't think that people who have YouTube as a job like myself like sit around and do nothing. Like I work from pretty much 8am to 10am every single day whether that's meetings, emails, filming, editing, vlogging, editing vlogs, uploading, this, that, blah blah. It takes a lot of time, it's very time consuming so I think it's best to kind of go into it as a hobby 
don't go into YouTube thinking, oh, I'm going to make so much money. Like, please don't do that. I think you can really tell when someone is just doing YouTube for the money. Like, I would film videos if I didn't get a penny for it. Like, I'd still be doing this if I didn't earn a penny. And I think that really shows with so many people. Like, their genuine passion and love for this platform. And I think, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it gets a little bit polluted with people who are fake or people who are just in it for the money so please don't start YouTube if you just want to like earn money you know what I mean please don't start YouTube with the intention of earning money because I think it's so like unfair to just use your audience for money like if you have loads of people watching you and you're just literally using those people to gain money I don't think that's fair like love those people connect with those people make those videos for those people I work hard on my videos, one, because I love it, and two, because I love knowing that my subscribers are enjoying the videos that I make. I think it's so important to kind of close that gap of YouTuber and viewer to YouTuber and friend, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's everything that I have to say, honestly. I think overall, what you need to remember is be genuine, be kind, be passionate, don't start it for the wrong reasons and if you're really honestly thinking about going for this, go all in. Put your heart, your soul, blood, sweat and tears into your channel because honestly it is so worth it. The, the like, I'm not going to say repercussions because that sounds like a negative. Like if you kill someone you've got repercussions but you know, just think of how much good can come out of this because my life has changed drastically because of my YouTube channel and I wouldn't change it for the world. I am so happy with my life right now. I feel so blessed. And yeah, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it a little bit helpful, a little bit useful. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.